from a visual arts, poetry, literature, music, um, offer like <clears throat> this space for like reflection. Um, and also like this, I, um, this idea of like posing questions like without needing conclusive answers, just like questions that get a discussion going. In art in particular, I guess, and what's maybe special about it, the visual arts, is that you can take a thing and place it in like, you can take a thing from the world and like change its meaning depending on where you place it or what you put it in relationship to, to like, so context changes meaning, which I think is something that's kind of special or unique to art, visual art. Uh, materials are, are pretty important. Um, I usually like <clears throat> the material to, to complement or, or reference like what's going on content-wise. Um, so for me, I've been really like growing, like growingly <laughs> in, inspired by um, reuse and like a kind of reclamation or like finding a new way to use that which has been discarded. Um, so the materials in like this particular project are very much related to uh, printing and printed matter and like the kind of thinking about the constructed of, the construction of uh, images um, in print media. Um, so in that way like paper, um, cardboard packaging, um, you know, plywood to reference like shipping, that th those sorts of things are like very specific and kind of important. I think there are a number of artists I can name um, for different reasons. I think what they all have in common is like a, this like having no fear to like um, to shift from, from um, I don't know, to, I guess to shift from project to project, like to, to not be afraid of, of not doing the same thing, like in repetition. Um, so, you know, to where like, you know, a solo show of theirs could look like a show of a number of different people, like that's really exciting to me. So, um, uh, I mean, artists like R.H. Quaitman do this um, to where she thinks about like uh, the bot, the, the work of an artist is like this ongoing narrative arc that doesn't really end and like kind of changes from, from project to project or chapter to chapter. I say Theaster Gates does this as well in terms of like, um, I mean his, his sort of work shifts depending on what material he acquires and um, the way that he's able to sort of hold on to like the historical identity of that material but also apply it in new ways. Um, so also this use of like the reclaimed. Um, or the discarded and like giving it new life but still sort of holding on to where it comes from is like a really interesting, powerful thing. Um, that's also something, <laughs> music also shifts a lot for me. Um, but recently, on, like on the way here, I was listening to or revisiting Earth Rot by David Axelrod, which is, <laughs> sounds kind of like a death metal record, but it's, it's uh, like a 70s jazz album. That's like really beautiful, harmonically. <laughs> I just went to a lecture by Scott McCloud, who's a comics writer and artist, and he was talking about uh, he was talking about facial expression, um, not just in writing, but in terms of like assessing human behavior. And he showed uh, this app. I guess there's also a website called Grimace, to where um, they have the six essential facial expressions that people emote and there's like a meter to where you can add like a rate like a increments of each expression to have and like a face will change depending on that so you can have like anger with a little bit of excitement which like ends up looking quite demented you can have surprise with like joy or surprise with fear and it just talks about how these six core things can always be piled up to to emote any expression that one can offer